Okay, so I don't know where you're going next here, but I just want to add in the idea of enabling and things that come up from the shadow not being incorporated. Mm -hmm. And I think, so we talked about, you know, what did you say for Gen X? It was uh, it was competency being transferred, leadership yeah, we're, competency. We're undermining a more competent world. Yeah, we're undermining a, a competent. So maybe instead of enabling, we're undermining competency. The boomers are undermining their own wisdom and the, the values they could bring forward. And I would say that, I don't know if it's undermining, but I, it's a sub-dom relationship that's formed in the world. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of subs putting up one dom mm -hmm. that they fully believe in, like you just said. And so right. this weird, like, have and have not sub dom relationship is emerging with the affectation of no we're all equal and we're all socially the yeah. same and yet i'm going that's not how it's actually bearing out what's interesting is you as a six you probably have some relationship with this idea of enneagram like, six enneagram six yes as as deferring your authority means that someone else is going to take in the authority spot mm -hmm. and so it's up to you to take your own authority and that's yeah. part of the growth path for an enneagram six 100 percent. it's like the same kind of idea it's it's this self-fulfilling prophecy that by not taking our inner individual authority, we're deferring it to someone else. And we're going to have the same, if not definitely absolutely worse at scale relationship with one person or a few people dominating cultures and guiding the direction of everybody else. And uh, we saw that 80 years ago. And that can get into really scary territory. So the thing that's being undermined is the ability for all of us to come together and actually work towards something. Yeah. To right. Be, to be heroes. To be heroes. Right. I, which is the thing I want to loop it back, back yeah. around. I do want to talk about Gen Z before we complete. Um, there probably won't be as much content on Gen Z because they're still kids. Yeah. But and so and the well, relationship. They're my kids. I got a lot of content on these guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I was also going to say. Pains in my butt. <laughs> uh, the. Um, and by the way, I do appreciate Joel that you like you very uh, you're bringing up such great content because you're willing to represent how people kind of like other generations feel about millennials. Sure. And so um, and you're taking the position of the person who feels these ways. I, I know you personally and I know that you don't actually have any heat towards millennials, but I know that the questions or the things you're putting by uh, Christian kind of help get into some of the more the nuances of it. And I appreciate that you, that you're willing to do that because I know somebody's going to be like, Joel hates millennials. And that's not, that is not the case. That said, that tweet of yours that mm. talked about obey, right? Mm. There was a very authoritarian tone that got sent back to Joel, mm -hmm. which is you're not allowed to say that effectively. Yep. O obey us. You're obey allowed to say that. me. <laughs> Yep. in knowing that you're not allowed like who we've talked about this who gave you the authority to just say something that the collective doesn't like right and so it's a uh, it's it's a um it's like a smuggle mm -hmm. of authority mm -hmm. right but it's it's uh it's did you pass this by everybody else is everybody else on board with it is everybody it's else it's a okay? moment of authority in defense of the social yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think what is being undermined with that is that um, well, first of all, the social will never completely get on board. You have to have leadership mm -hmm. in order for any group of people to move forward with anything. There has to be leadership, which is why there's always a, a looking for that leadership. Mm -hmm. But I also think that what gets undermined is self authority mm -hmm. because there there there's a hyper vigilance against anybody else showing self authority. So how, there's a, that need to own, to bring the shadow authority piece right. into awareness, to own your own authority. What if you get to say whatever you want to? Right. What if that's also reality? Yeah. And I had a moment where I was like, yeah, what, what if I can't say whatever I want? <laughs> yeah, Antonio, I can say things. Wow. Um, <laughs> right. No, but it's like, it is like the word that I had down for millennials was commitment because there's a lot of non-committal language and it's a commitment to your voice and what you want to do and what you want to bring out. Unpack that Un non-committal language. Non-committal language, sign it, sort of, kind of, maybe, I guess. Just like, a, uh, I don't know, like, what do you think? Like the that word kind like? Of, like, it, you know, it's like this, like, 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 a lot of like language. Yeah, maybe? Okay. I, I mean, I attributed it rig originally to a lot of California-based programming growing up that we adopted the word like as a culture. But I think there's some of that aspect of non-committalness sure. in the language. And I see it in the zeitgeist generally, even not non-millennials are using some sort of kind of maybe language at times, but weasel they use it a lot more. Yeah, I do. I noticed myself doing weasel words and I've tried to conscientiously remove them, but they're still, they're still in there. They're still in there. And so to speak to like the hero aspect, it's, 
it's interesting. You think of like, you know, the Power Rangers or the Avengers. It's like, it's always a group. I've been watching a lot of wrestling lately. There are more factions than ever, just groups of wrestlers together, but there's still individual strengths and you can't, I mean, the most successful teams are ones that have individual strengths that show up and are able to, you know, come to the forefront and do things together and actually have an impact on the world. And I think that's part of the self-fulfilling undermining as well is actually yeah. having an impact on the world. Hmm. So then there's an opportunity bringing this personal authority component mm -hmm. from the shadow for millennials, just like boomers, they need to be willing to, to bring their wisdom to other, meet them halfway mimetically, find a way to interface with other people's perspectives, visions, paradigms to bring their wisdom to their, their grandchildren and their children, right? They need to go, they need to be the bodhisattva that comes yeah. down the mountain and shares their wisdom. Gen Xers need to be mentors. They need to help foster the world that they want to see as opposed to just grumbling and complaining that everybody else is incompetent. They need to see areas that need amelioration and be willing to be the mentors that help other people understand how to do things with you know a little bit more refinement and not just not just hard systems that are constructed but people systems right like helping people become competent right and those systems to work infusing and i mean i think one thing that extras could do i'm going back to the last week just as a note is imbuing an idea of excellence in other people mm -hmm. because one of the things that i think extras do well is they figure out how to do something like a little like like really well right like they complete it they clean as they go they do all these little touches of excellence uh pushing themselves and i think we could really imbue this idea of excellence into other people mm -hmm. you know don't just skip steps don't just half you know half ass it do it well yeah. um and and that's what competence is is it's doing everything well what what do millennials need to do what's their big takeaway and insight it's being able to cut through the noise of all of the automatic chatter that is happening within your friends and family and what is happening around you. Typically ideological narratives. What are you just making yourself small around and how can you find your individual path through it? And it, there's a bravery there. It's like sometimes you might lose people. Sometimes you might lose uh, connections. Sometimes people won't trust you anymore. But you spend 100% of your life with yourself. And that's an important relationship to foster. If you've spent most yeah. of your life ignoring that relationship, like that's a, that's a lot of wasted time. 